Welcome back to another episode of Real Talk. Listen, one of these days, you know, we're going to have some theme music. And y'all going to be excited to not always have to hear me say, welcome back. Welcome. Because every time I say that, you look at me like you shake your head. But you didn't offer any theme music. Uh, I heard you sing a little bit, you know. But um, you didn't offer any theme music or anything like that. Um, you know, so when we can get some theme music for any voice out there that... Um, you know, it's nice who can sing and God's touch your voice to be able to do that. Listen, you know, I think it'll be dope for us, you know, to be able to to have that just like introduction like that. Um, but it wouldn't be a real talk episode if we didn't ask. Or I didn't ask my co-host how his week was. So, Steve, pastor, mm-hmm. how was your week? Fantastic. <laughs> It was fantastic. So if you haven't watched episode number 35, um, we had started up again going through our transparency moment, and it was dealing with the life of a PK. And LaRussia, our, our, our guest from last week, was walking us through the questions that I was outlining. I mean, the feedback was great. Very very yeah, good. I didn't I didn't have to pull out much information. You know, sometimes you have to keep questioning. It was like, no, from the first question, I said, oh, wow, this is this is going to be a great, a great episode. But if you haven't watched that yet, please stop this video and go check out episode 35, because it's going to lead you right here. All right. You came back. Cool. Picking up here on episode 36 on I had asked LaRussia a question in regards to, did she feel as though that, because she was stating how she was alone, unheard, um, the violin music, and so, (laughs) so, so she, and I was just asking her, has she ever looked into the perspective of her father? And so... I brought up the verse addressing, you know, being able to rule a household well, because that was why they sat him down, apparently. So definitely want to pick back up on on that. And then you proceeded to state that it it really wasn't the place of a PK of a child to be the adult. It's for the adult who is mature to be able to step in and uh, help out the child. So I want to pick back up from from there. So our guests again this week. Miss LaRussia, how are you doing? Fantastic. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, well, thank God Perfect. this is going to be uh, <laughs> the last episode of this. Fantastic. You hear that? Nothing, nothing exciting other than fantastic well, in your I'm week? Pretty, my, my days are always exciting. I okay. with children, so there's never a dull moment. There we go. I like to hear that. See? I, and you, you went from being a PK who was unheard to... Now you're hearing those children who are unheard, right? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. All right. Hey, at least you're honest. You're going to get honesty up here in Real Talk. They'll talk about your enunciation. They'll, you know, t- <laughs> I mean, you should see this guy post up. He can't spell to save his life. But all right. <laughs> Episode 36. Let's hop into this. Steve. Can we please turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3? Now, for our audience... Don't prep them. Don't prep them to create a presupposition for them. I'm not prepping them on anything. As they go and turn to maybe first, you know, 1 Timothy 3 as well, too. I just want to make sure that we're giving them the clarity to understand what's going on. We have LaRussia, who's a PK, okay? She said a lot of her rebellion started when she wasn't heard. People were saying... I they mean, were she, lying about her. Yeah, they were, they were lying on her, right? And I don't know if I can believe women in the church and men in the church are lying on you who are older than you. Like, they, like what reason? Come on now. Like, what reason would a person say, I want to wake up and I want to lie on this girl this morning? You're asking a lot here, okay? You're, you're asking a lot. Now, I, I think you're playing the victim a little bit, but, you know. Oh, but in Yo, this in this culture, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be calm. I'm, I'm gonna be calm. Saying, I'm, I, I know, think you're playing the victim a little bit, just a little bit. But I'm gonna have to pull you off him. <laughs> Not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so I just want to look at First Timothy chapter three because, like I said, I, maybe they were lying on her. I, that's just tough. But the issue isn't so much as about them lying on her. We're not even addressing that. Well, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're addressing the that the, that they the, sat her. Well, they sat her down. Her, sat her, her father, father down, down. And then. It, it as a pro it into but it was she was structure. the byproduct of yes. why they yes. got sat down she was living but then from that premise you were expect you try to make her think that it could be her responsibility to think like an adult to see her father's perspective to make him feel like you know let me support his whatever and well, i'm saying well you put words in my mouth by saying that i think that she should think like an adult i didn't say that i just said you, that that jack that that the way you framed the question is implying that she would have to think like an adult because you asked her to see it through his perspective, an adult perspective. It's not so much an adult perspective. It's it's the the perspective of a believer who's trying to live out nope, the righteous. No, 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 no. That's again. That's again. What no. are you talking about? No. It's her father who is a pastor as an adult. And you're expecting, you asked her. You were a pastor at, at, at how old? 23. Okay, 20, 20, 23. People would say you're not even really an adult at that time. That's beside the point. Well, I was an adult. My point is, is that age is really irrelevant to how old you are as a pastor. All I was asking, so you feel as though, quick sidebar, that you have to be on the person's age group to understand the perspective that they're coming from? I'm expecting her to not be held accountable for a perspective that's beyond her age, for her to know how to adapt to a situation that an adult would have to learn how to adapt to as the scriptures point out. So therefore- So you're, you're presupposing that she couldn't understand his perspective. I'm presupposing nothing other than stating the fact that the scriptures make a clear indication between adult and a child, does it not? Yes or no? Yes. Oh. There you go. So therefore, if the scriptures were addressing an adult. David was a child, though, was he not? What what, was he was he not young? Could he not understand things on an adult level? At what point is he? At what point are we talking about in David's life on the premise of this discussion that we're having right now? We're, we can do this all day. <laughs> I'm just we trying to say that you're all day. you're really you're. I'm now just you're saying that it. you're stretching. I'm it. really not. All I'm saying is that let's get to, let's you can get understand at twelve this. or thirteen. A perspective of somebody just because they're older than you. That's no, all I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that you wanted her to have that and to operate from that as if she's not even maturely grown in understanding what's taking You're place. You're presupposing again. A am I? Yeah. She said it out of her own mouth. Go ahead. Um, that's that's a good point. Yeah. Go to First Timothy you. three. Thank you. We'll do this all day. Okay, First Timothy three. I I just want to bring up something because, um. Once again, I get that you didn't ask to be a, a, a PK, but this is still vital um, to seeing that maybe some of the troubles that you experienced as a PK could have been avoided. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Are you there, Pastor Steve? Yes. Okay, read it, please. Let's start from verse 1, just in case anybody out there... Um, my glasses up. Oh, my goodness. And they're all spotted up. The real verse is, is verse 4, but let's just start. Go, yeah, let's just go one through. Yeah. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruled his how I'm sorry, one that ruled well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man knew, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall we take care of the church of God? Okay, cool. Can we stop right there? <clears throat> LaRussia, and stop me at any point if I'm misunderstanding your statement, okay? From last week. From last week, okay? The check boxes that you had, right? Just relax. Can I talk? You see this guy, right? He doesn't... Yikes, I don't overcut you. Um, you made me lose my train of thought. That's great. Um, okay, so let me work back through. So you you were upset that your father or your parents didn't, didn't hear you and that they were just taking the sides of the people in the church, right? And you felt like your father 
then acted in a different way towards you once he got sat down or once leadership came and, sa and sat him down? Did you sense that your father and his dealings with you were different? Okay. So based on the scripture you guys just read, I want to say that like my dad was doing all those things one through four, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, not five, but go ahead. What was five again? Um, it's oh, okay. it's irrelevant right now. Never mind. So he was doing all of those things one through four, but I think that he reached a point of frustration, um, just with the outsiders and their opinions, the peanut gallery, and it was just kind of like you know you're embarrassing me everywhere I go. You're acting up in school. You're getting in trouble at home. You're getting in trouble at church, and now they set me down. Because of your behavior, and I like I didn't find out until I was an adult that it was because of this particular book. I just thought it was because I had an attitude. But I'm like, I mean, I'm forced to go to youth group. I'm forced to go to the cell groups. I'm forced to be here. You know, like when do I get a choice to just be a person? No, and I'm I'm actually glad that you stated um, everything so that I don't uh, misquote you. But your father did state. He was frustrated that they sat me down because of you yeah. and, and your behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what I want to know is from the perspective of looking at these scriptures, especially in verse 4 through 5, where it says, He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? Based upon reading that verse, it's pretty clear what you were stating that you weren't submissive and if that's the case then you are to blame for him being sat down and hence the blame for the ramifications from that so i'm just saying part of your issues that you had as a pk was self-inflicted and self-imposed not necessarily so do you feel like you were being submissive I think that a pattern had already been established of, you know, the way that others perceived me. I think that he kind of saw some things in me that were not pleasing. So when other people were adding to that, it just kind of, kind of was like a stockpile. Um, so again, when I would go to defend in situations where I really was not wrong, it was like, I just don't even want to hear you. So like I said last week, it definitely fueled my rebellion in. It definitely fueled my disdain for church and Christianity and, you know, just even um, family. Because it's like, yo, if I don't have my family, I don't have the church, I don't have anybody. I can understand that. I just have one more question and then I'll have Steve chime in on, on picking apart this verse. Apparently, I'm not looking at it correctly. Um, if you step outside yourself and view the same scenario and situation that somebody that you're talking about happened with your father and they could see you out in school or whatever the case may be, right? Would you say, like I said, you're stepping outside of this, you, but all the details are the same. Would you say that that father or that pastor was managing his household well if the public is seeing all this rebellion and disobedience? I would have to say it would depend on what part of my life I was in. Am I looking at it as that child, that teenager, or am I looking at looking at it as an adult who can see things from a perspective as someone who lived a life as, you know, everyone else, and then now I'm seeing somebody who maybe I go to church with who's experiencing certain things with their child. Okay. When did you when did you bring the book? I probably was about 16. Okay. Even more better. Even more better. So you had you had way more perspective of, of some things at 16 than you would if you was 11 or 10. Um, Steve, take us away here. Um, with the with take the verse. Away where? Like, you your statement was So now you want me to, you want to stop. I'll I'll help you, okay? My I wanted to give some pushback to Miss Russia, I think her life so far as a PK, as she's describing, 
definitely had some highs and some lows and i'm definitely grateful for the fact that she's around kids now being that uh voice to them so that they can be heard um but like i said i just wanted to give some pushback because i felt like she did some self-imposed things and she wanted to blame it on mom pops and some people in the church the peanut gallery but the reality is is that she brought the book she had the behavior she wasn't being submissive and they had to sit her father down and last episode i talked about how she her father wasn't able to rule the household well according to uh leadership now granted leadership did some other stuff that they should have sat down other people many for other as well things. many other things right okay i don't even need all that but the reality is still that LaRussia is still a part of why her father had to be sat down. So all I'm saying is, you said that that verse gets right, taken. Please. Yeah, I want the audience to know, what is it, why is it that you, you know, have to you, interpret? You know exactly what you're doing. Can You see how I don't cut him off when he talks, right? <laughs> This is crazy. So I just want the audience to be able to see that. Um, now we get to this verse, you're, you're saying that it's being uh, misinterpreted. But so how should it be interpreted properly about ruling your household well and your children being submissive? Like, like if I'm looking at this wrong and she shouldn't and that wouldn't have given you're basically saying if you were a pastor and her father was a pastor, and y'all up in the same church, you wouldn't have uh, sat him down for his child being rebellious openly. I'm not even going to give my answer until I can give you the thread I would use logically to come to that conclusion. Based upon these verses, right? Correct. Correct. All right. I'm, I'm here so in, I have in the verses. Question you have I, a question before you answer. Okay, because go ahead. In order for the question, it brings out the state, it brings out what should we be looking at? Okay. Ruling his own house well. That's the statement, right? Mm hmm. What's the standard? What do you mean, what's the standard? Ruling your own house well. That word well, what is that standard? What is it that I would use, that criteria that would distinguish I am ruling my own house well? What's the standard? The standard would have to be the word of God. They have to be raising them up in, in some kind of parenting verses because if not, it becomes subjective. So you're telling me that my parenting is based on how well I, how well my children live out their Christianity. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm okay, saying. So you're saying you asked us what was the standard yes. of of how we can say if somebody's doing this well because or not. You're saying it says who ruleth his own house well. Right, and you're asking me what would be the standard to know if he was doing that well or not, mm -hmm. and I'm saying that standard would have to be from the scriptures that outline how to parent. So if it says make sure, I'm just giving an example. If it says make sure you read. Uh, Every, every night, make sure your, your, your child reads. Make sure that they pray. If that's in the scriptures, then we would see, because those are parenting verses, we would be able to say, like, okay, as long as he did that, then he's ruling his household well. What I'm saying is it can't be subjective. It can't be my rules. Like, you know how some people's houses, they have their own rules? Like, you probably have some of your own rules. Some people may say, take your shoes off at the door. Yeah. That's not... Because then that becomes subjective. So there has to be some parenting verses that would allow us to see something being well or something not being well. So you're still directing it to sound like that, how well I raise my child as a Christian. It's, it's, like it's not necessarily a Christian. If, if we was in the Proverbs and they, and they teach you things like, so then you're, like having fairness and justice, yeah. it's still gonna be according to God's character. So then it wouldn't be based off of church protocol if I'm ruling my own house well or not. Unless church protocol Church protocol wouldn't be the standard, no. It wouldn't be the standard. No. So what happens if I'm being held to a measure that's not biblical, but it's a church protocol? Then, like Martin Luther King said, it's unjust law, brother. But what happens if a lot of churches and pastors dictate their 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 standard based on that tradition? Um, maybe you should drop a five-minute video to the... So what I'm getting at, then, is what happens if somebody's using that verse and the narrative is ruling your own house well is determined on how well you get your child to line up with church protocol. Uh, that's totally out of line. I, I would understand how somebody would would mis, misuse those those verses for so that. So then you do see the possibility of that, that verse being abused. In yes, and I can also see the possibility of them doing that to Lerush's father.
So now you get where I'm going. Uh, 100%. So if my house is being ruled well, but my children don't line up with church protocol, should I be sat down? No. Well, there you have it. And I, well, let me just piggyback off of this. I don't, I think that what the person should be judged on, well, a male, because it says it here. The, what the guy should be judged on is that, did he put in the time to do it? I mean, David put in time to, to, to teach. I, I understand all that. What I'm getting after is the I know what you're getting after. The point is this, though. If, I get your point. Your your point is you're raising them up on some church protocol that isn't biblical. That's being quote unquote standardized as biblical through somebody preaching that verse to justify that protocol. What I'm saying though, in in another notch, uh, not to your point, but it supports in theory uh, uh, the argument of of how to manage your, your own household well is free will. The you can't force a child to do anything or a kid to do anything, especially in this in this day and age. You can beat them, but as you know, some parents may may find out within five minutes they're they're going and doing the same thing over again, right? So the point is is not so much I should see behavior from the child. It's more so of how would you know if this person is putting in the time or not? I mean, Adam and Adam and Eve one sibling, one of their child, child child did a sacrifice that was of God, one that wasn't of God. Are you going to say he didn't rule his household well? Obviously, the standard was presented to them if one of the, the uh, yeah, children do it. do it. So what I'm saying is that what I also think should be pointed out here, too, is that I wouldn't sit down a person because Larsha was out in rebellion, so to speak, as I questioned her in episode 35, she stated, they presented me everything possible to understand the things of God. And so I think that what people want to say is they're in check. They don't sin. I don't think it's just church, church protocol, which is why I brought up that point. I don't think that it's just that. I think there's some good things about integrity and honesty that they would still call out that you did wrong. Would you, would you say that that? What do you mean? If they brought up the fact that LaRussia was stealing. Right. That isn't about necessarily Christianity. No. Right. Yeah. But that would be something That's that would moral, be right. Right. So what I'm saying is they wouldn't be wrong for bringing that up. Right. And saying like, hey, your child, I saw him still and do that wouldn't be wrong. But would you sit him down if you know that he's invested time already in doing that? And yet the 12, 13, 14 year old says, yeah, but I want to do. I want to go contrary. Right. You know, so I think that that's something to, to, to look at as well, um, too. So maybe they got your father on a bad deal. Maybe you really did live up to these things. But I, I have another. Uh, Dude, you have not even allowed me to finish. Oh, go ahead. Finish. Finish with the verse, please. You have one minute. Oh, I have more than that. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Ah, go on. Thank you. So. All right. So maybe we, we see here that they gave your father the short end of, of the stick like they they didn't do things correctly in, in how they handled him they took their frustrations out on you and what they wanted you to be on on him and which isn't fair especially your own testimony and witness to the fact that he's living what he's saying and he's investing time in me learning and understanding i have do you feel, though, like your father, though, should have defended you more? Do you feel like he took on the role as a preacher there and just being sat down for, you know, his title down the road so that he can be elevated again? Um, do you feel like he, he took that route by sitting down versus defending you and possibly being kicked out of the church? Do you get the question? You want to rephrase it? Yes. Do you feel like your father, by taking the judgment of being sat down, didn't defend you? Like he didn't stick up for you? Because obviously he was frustrated and he vented out to you about how he was had to be sat down. Do you feel like by doing that and by accepting that punishment that he didn't defend you? Basically, he took his anger out on the wrong person. 
He should have taken it out on the church leaders. Right. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I want um, just given historically the things that took place at that particular church, I think that because my father, um, he was pliable. Um, I think that he was an easy target. I feel like in the midst of everything that was taking place in that church, he did not have as much history with the pastor. Um, he did not have as much time invested despite his title in the church. I think that, um, people saw him as somebody who, if you give him this directive, he's going to follow it. So I feel like maybe in that setting, if I'm answering your question, Maybe he didn't stand up and defend me, um, but I do feel like there were many times in my life that he did stand up for me, um, despite, you know, what other people were trying to project. But I think that happened as I got, like, older and I started vocalizing um, my thoughts, feelings, and opinions about my upbringing. Like, as a kid, we definitely had everything and more like we experienced things that kids in my neighborhood never experienced so we had like a really rich childhood if i could do it all over again i would definitely take out the church experience <laughs> and i probably would have probably probably it's a good thing for her to do yeah. that because that experience wasn't a godly experience right it was a man-made traditional experience i think i would have definitely um come to christianity sooner because i had gotten to a point where i was like yo i'm not going to church i don't want anything to do with god I hate people in the church, and I hope they all burn in hell that they're trying to create for me. Jesus. So, yeah. Jeez. You know. Thank God for Jesus. Thank yes. him. Yes. Um, did that answer your question, though? It it did, because you said that eventually he he stood up for you. Like, once I started just being like, so, you know, children are to be seen and not heard. That wasn't necessarily the rule in my house, but we had to be very, we had to kind of tiptoe around the things that, we said um, when we were voicing our concerns or we had opposition to some of the things that were put in place. Um, once I was out of my parents' house, I'm like, okay, so now you're going to hear me because, you know, before I couldn't say it, but now I'm grown. I got my own car, my own house. I pay my bills. So now you're going to hear what I have to say. And he was just kind of like, I didn't know you felt like that. Like, I didn't know you were feeling these things. And I'm like, how did you not know? Mm -hmm. Hello? Like... You don't see my cry for help. Like, I feel like a lot of times when kids act out, like sometimes, granted, they are acting out, but a lot of times it's a cry for help. Like, there's a deficit. There's a need that is not being met. And because my dad was so much of a servant at the church, I feel like he lost a lot of time with us. And he'll even say this, like, yo, I literally gave so much of my time to the church and I missed my kids. So... By the time you know, I got to the age where, you know, you were starting to formulate your own opinions and, you know, teenage, um, preteen and things like that, it was like, yo, like, I don't know you, so all you have to go on is what other people are saying. So you definitely felt like he sacrificed a lot of parenthood for being a pastor or a preacher. Yes, definitely. He, and his, he'll say it like, you know, fellowship was important to me. You know, ministry was important to me. And I, I have kind of learned and we've come to terms with the fact that he has some, like a lot of regrets about, you know, things that he feels like he missed as a father because of his role in the church. Because his first, his first line of ministry was church. You know, we were taken care of at home, but like his first ministry was like the people. And now, at this point in our life, he realizes, like, my family is my first ministry. You know, before anybody else or anything else, my family. Granted, we're adults now. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter when you learn the lesson. Yeah. So long as you learn the lesson. But it's good, though, because I feel like we're able to reflect and we're able to have tough but honest conversations. Like, sometimes there's some yelling. Sometimes there's some tears on either side. But I think that... Um, I definitely have learned a lot about grace, um, especially when it comes to when and if I, I grace the world with my offspring. <laughs> um, well, I have two more questions and then I'm done. Do yeah, I know I got it. Do you feel like, um, 
there was a conflict between being a daughter versus being a PK. Mm. I think both of them uh, come with unrealistic expectations. Just as a man, um, you look at your daughter as this precious little cream puff and you don't want her to get dented in any way. Take it how you want to take it. Um, and it's like, yo, you guys have these parameters that you expect us to live by. I think it, it goes hand in hand with the whole PK thing because it's like you see your child in this particular way and you want her to be um, chaste and, you know, pure. But it's like, yo, those, those are not the type of women that you were chasing, you know? So, like, how do you expect your daughter to be devoid of feelings and emotions and um, a sensual side, if you will? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's just not reality. And I think the same thing with people who are in a position of preachers or leadership in the church. Your children are human beings. They experience life just like you had to experience life. Um, we're not born to perfection in, in children. Like my mom always says, kids don't come with instructions. You're going to get a couple scrapes and bruises and there's going to be some hard times, but you do the best that you can with what you're given. And I think that um, it was devastating for my family just to go back when our core church broke apart because we were a family. So it's important, if I could put in the plug, to be connected to um, a fellowship that is Bible-based and that people are family. Because I think a lot of times people are Shout just... Shout out CCA. I think people just attend church. You love your pastor. You love his wife. You love his children. But there's not necessarily the love between the lay members. You get it? Like, you yeah. can pick and choose. Sometimes you're not going to love all 100% of them. But go ahead. You know, so I just think that that for us was, like, the beginning of the bad is when that church, like, split apart because it was like we were always grasping for that family feel, feeling. And I think um, had that not happened, maybe my path would have been different. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely grateful to be at this point in my life. Absolutely. Anything, any path that still leads to salvation, we take that. Yeah. I think we would agree. I was going to ask you. And to learn from it. And, and to, to be able to learn. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Experiences. And then to get right out there with, with children and then put your, and want to put yourself, you know, you're not looking at it in this like negative sense, like I'm just going to stay away from, like mm -hmm. you want to get back out there. I was going to ask you this last question, but you kind of already answered it and I'll close with this, with this thought, which was what advice would you give to um, PKs, but I think the best thing you stated was that you're still a human being. Mm -hmm. And that that isn't a license to sin, if you're watching this. Like, it seems like you're just giving people, these, these children a license to sin and when they're mature. No, that's not the point. The point is, is that there isn't a switch that the Holy Spirit touches within a 11, 10 year old that makes them live righteously and holy. There's conversations like we're having right now that most of the time pastors, preachers don't have because they're preaching at different sermons. They're pre they're doing all these other things. And then they expect now when they come home, you just know all those things. They don't have those conversations with you. They don't have the, the real talk conversations like, yeah, while you spend that time over there, I'm getting impressed by a guy and I'm having thoughts. And f they don't have those type of conversations. So I think the for you to say to be know that you're a human being, know that God uh, still uh, created you in his image and his likeness, and that through the scriptures, he can walk with you on how to live a righteous and, and holy life while still showing grace and mercy to others. And you're not going to be perfect. And don't go in trying to live this expectation life that other people have for you. And I think going back to your point, you said, I would never let my child be in that predicament. I think all it takes is a couple of people just to stand out and just say, and you probably have to lose some things by doing it. But yeah, no, that expectation you're talking about, I'm not placing that on, on my child. And that begins to, especially as a pastor, that begins to, we're not lowering down the standard of righteousness, just so you know. We're lowering the standard of 
humanity's understanding of righteousness that isn't of God. It's almost like the Pharisees. We're removing the traditional mindset standard that's in the church that's not biblical. You're, you're, you're establishing true biblical precepts and concepts with your children. And when she's saying that you're human, she knew she was human. The problem is that the adults don't treat kids like they're human, especially PKs. It's like they're prepackaged, like they're just supposed to just come out and just program to be good and do this and stand and read and pray and know all of the- Be submissive. My thing is this, I, you know, my wife and I, we, we refuse, we refuse to put our children in those predicaments. We, 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 we don't, we don't we, if my child goes rogue, we have already explained why that, we have already talked to that child, we made that child aware of how they're going rogue, but at the same time, we embrace them. We're, that's, that's our child. We love that child. That child is going to grow organically. They're going to see for themselves how they went rogue and what it did to them. And in the back of their mind, as it says in the book of Proverbs, wisdom will cry out and it will laugh at you. Because now that you want resolve, you'll already be bearing the consequences of the mistake. doesn't mean there's no risk. It doesn't mean you can't be restored. But wisdom will make you look back and be like, I should have listened. And I knew they, they, they were telling me right. You follow what I'm saying? So you're organically growing. You're and I'm giving you that chance to learn that hard lesson. Unfortunately, the prodigal son's father let his son get that experience out there. Father was teaching his son the right things, but he wanted to go on his own, so he did. What did the father do? Did he abandon him? The man waited and waited and waited and waited and waited for his child to come back. And the moment he saw his son, he didn't rag on him about his sins. He embraced him and said, that son that that son of mine that was once lost is found now. Absolutely. And that's the way to end this because that's that was exactly what I was thinking about is the prodigal son example. So what are you going to say about, about that parable? Are you going to say, and I'm saying to the person who's like, no, like push really your child to the side if they don't want to live that. What are you going to say about him and that example for Christ? Did to he not rule his own house well? He had a whole other son that was living up to every standard. But unfortunately, that one son got caught up, wanted his own way, and he went. The father never, you don't hear him once telling him, you know what, I'm going to sit you down for a while because, you know, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait to decide what I'm going to love. You know, the father was already loving his son because he was there waiting for him, looking out. Hoping he would see his son today, doesn't come. Hoping to see his son the next day, doesn't come. Hoping, it, and then finally one day, his son shows up. After all that his son has been through, the Bible says the son came to himself and said, I was better at my father's, I would be better at my father's house as a servant than where I am right now. Amen. And I think that that's the godly wisdom of, you know, doing as much as you could in stealing the things of God in that person so at least they have something to think about in their minds. Um, so that's it. Any other thoughts, comments? Um, you said, what would I tell PKs? Yeah. At this point in time? Quick, um, quick snippet of what you would tell quickly, them. Um, do not allow anyone to make you have a fear of failure. Um, okay. Just to piggyback off of what Pastor Steve said, if you have parents who are rooted and grounded in love, despite your failure, they will always embrace you. Amen. I like that. Don't be afraid to fail. Accept the gospel message. Amen. <laughs> Check us out. What's Episode. The What's the homework? Oh, our homework is continue to go gain one more subscriber. So every time you watch a video, go gain one new, a new one, a new subscriber. And have and them do what? Click the notification bell the so they bell. can know every time an another episode <laughs> has been dropped. Um, so yeah, if you like these videos, continue to share them, gain new subscribers, click the notification bell. God bless.